Okay, this is lecture 13, part two, and this is going to be about aqueous equations, aqueous reactions. There's a specific um, way we write the reactions. There are actually three different ways we write the reactions. So this is going to be when you are mixing two solutions together and you get a reaction. What does that mean when I say we get a reaction? It means you get a precipitate. It means you get a solid forming out of it. You see this slide? So going back to part one, come on now, we talked about solubility. And some compounds are not soluble in water. Again, this is all in water. So they will not dissolve. So is this going to happen if you mix two solutions together, which means two dissolved solutions, and when you mix them, they rearrange, and I'll, I'm going to work this out on the whiteboard, and you actually get a precipitate. That means it falls out of the solution. This means a solid forms, or gas, usually a solid, but it can be a gas, and you can see it. So you pour two liquid solutions together and all of a sudden you get this, this cloud or this powder or this, that's your, that's your reaction. And when this happens, we say you actually had a chemical reaction. So I'm going to go through this step by step, but first I'm going to go, I'm going to show you one more thing. We, we write this reaction can be written three different ways, very specific ways. This one's called the molecular equation. This is the pretty version. This is everything in the compound with this symbol. And this is like what you would see in your textbook. So this is the big picture, okay? That's the molecular equation. The ionic equation, anything that actually is an ion. So silver nitrate aqueous means I have dissolved silver nitrate in water. And if I go back to my rules, I'll go, I'll go to my table. Where's silver? Here's silver. Down here, there's nitrate. So silver nitrate is soluble. What does that mean? It means that it dissociates into its respective ions. So in reality, we don't have, when you have sil silver nitrate aqueous, you actually don't have silver nitrate compound. You have silver ions and nitrate ions that are separately surrounded by water because it's soluble, okay? The reason for that is the solubility. So when we write an ionic equation, anything that actually exists as an ion, we spell that out. So this is the second way we write an aqueous reaction equation. So this is this is the big picture, the molecular equation. The ionic equation is what's what's actually in your beaker, everything that's in the beaker. The net ionic equation is we remove the ions that are the identical left side and right side because they're there, but they're not they're not making any new chemistry, right? They're just hanging around. They're literally called spectator ions. They're spectators. They're hanging around watching the show, right? They're watching silver chloride form. But on the left side, we have nitrate ion. On the right side, we have nitrate ion. Aqueous, they're both identical. So we remove them. On the right side here is a product. We have sodium ion aqueous. On the left side, sodium ion aqueous. They're identical. We remove them. The net ionic equation only shows the participants in the chemical reaction, which in this case was the silver ions, the chloride ions mixing together to form the solid silver chloride. So I'm actually going to take the same example, but I'm gonna write it out on the whiteboard. Just we're gonna take this step by step. So first of all, the molecular equation
This is, you know, the big picture. This is the pretty version. The ionic equation. This is what's actually there. What's actually in your beaker. And then the net ionic equation is only the chemical reaction Rxn is reaction participants. Only the ions, the compounds, whatever is that's actually involved in the chemical reaction. I'm trying to get that focus better. Okay. Only what's participating in the chemical reaction goes in the net, just like it says, the net. So it's the ions that are involved in producing your, your precipitate. So let's look at each of these for the example I just went over. So for our big picture molecular equation, we had very pretty silver nitrate. That's, let me start that over. Can you see that? aqueous, that tells us that this, because it's soluble, is actually ions. But we're making the pretty statements. I'm just looking at the big picture. I took a beaker of silver nitrate. I mixed it with a volume of a solution of sodium chloride. That's aqueous there. And that gave me a solid formed, and I had sodium nitrate in there. I don't know if you can see that in the video. Okay, that's NO3. So this is my big picture. This says, this is what I did. I went into the lab. I took a volume of my silver nitrate solution. I took a volume of my sodium chloride solution. I mixed them together. I got a solid. Of silver, of silver chloride, and there's also sodium nitrate. All right. But the ionic equation shows us, well, what's actually in there? Let's change colors. So the ionic equation says, well, actually, in my silver nitrate, and notice I'm still putting aqueous there. It's in water. I actually, because if you go back to that table and you look up silver nitrate and you can pause it and look at it right now, that is soluble. Therefore, it, when it's in water, it's actually silver ions and nitrate ions. There is no more compound. The water has come and solvated it all and surrounded all of the silver ions and surrounded all the nitrate ions individually. And also, if you look up, anything with sodium is soluble anything. So you say, oh, well, I actually added individual sodium and chloride ions. You can see this ionic equation gets quite long. And then I got, this is a solid. It is not going to break up. It is insoluble. Go look at that. Go look at it on the table. You can pause the video, go back to the slides or rewind, and we'll look at it again on the table when I go back to the slides. So you keep that as a solid because that's what it is. And go look sodium nitrate. Anything sodium is always soluble. So that's also ions and nitrate. Okay, so this is what's actually in your beaker. 
That's what the ionic equation is. All right. Now for the net, you look at what you have. I have silver over here. I have silver chloride. All right. I have nitrate ion aqueous. I have nitrate ion aqueous. They're identical. For the following net ionic equation, we're not going to include them. So I'm doing this now for the next step. On the left side, I have sodium, because here's my, here's my arrow, sodium ions, and on the right side, I have sodium ions. They are identical. And then I have chloride ions, but I have silver chloride. That's in a compound. It's not identical. It is a chemical reaction. So now I'm going to rewrite what's left. I've removed my spectator ions. They're literally spectators. They're watching this reaction happen, not participating. They're sitting there with their popcorn and soda and their cell phones. Didn't know ions had cell phones, did you? So bring down what's left. Again, always include phases at this point. And what you have is your net ionic equation. This is what's actually participating in your chemical reaction. Silver ion plus chloride ion mixed together form a solid insoluble silver chloride. So let's go back and look at that table and tell this story with the table. So I'm just going to have to, so we have silver nitrate, sodium chloride, silver chloride, and sodium nitrate. Because you notice what happened, these were all ions over here. So they switch. The silver joins up with the chlorine, the sodium joins up with the nitrate. Well, the sodium and the nitrate didn't turn into anything, but the silver and chloride did. So that's what you're doing. So the first one was silver nitrate. Here's my silver. And nitrate is one of those that's soluble. And if we go to the rules, nitrates are soluble, okay? So that's going to be in our ionic solution as silver and nitrate separately, aqueous. The other was sodium chloride. Anything with sodium is soluble. So when you write your ionic equation, you separate that out. Sodium of anything is soluble. So I rearrange them and I'm going to mix my silver with the chloride. And here it is right here, the second one down. You go across chlorine, chloride ion, down silver, and it's insoluble. That's how you know it gets an S next to it. That's how you know you're going to write silver chloride with an S for solid because it's insoluble, it's gonna fall out of solution. And the other combination was sodium nitrate. Again, anything with sodium is soluble, here it is. And so we write it with the ions. So that's how I knew these, plus again, your rules. See, halides, the halides, chlor chloride bromide and iodide are soluble, however, not if silver is involved. So silver chloride, silver bromide, silver iodide are insoluble. So the three Aqueous reaction equations you need to know, and you have to know how to write these, identify them, and it's just, it's telling a story. You start with the big picture, the pretty picture. You have what's really going on in that beaker, and then you have the net ionic equation, what actually was involved in the chemical reaction. That's a chemical reaction. Okay, so here's another one. Now we have a word, we're giving this in words, barium sulfate. And yes, at this point you will need, this is, you will need to know your naming because you'll be getting these kinds of problems. Barium sulfate can be prepared, so that's your product. By mixing solutions, so there's your aqueous, barium chloride and sodium sulfate. So the, the balanced molecular equation would be the pretty version. The ionic equation is what's actually in those solutions. I have a solution of barium chloride. If it's a solution, then it's soluble. 
Okay, then that means it's barium ions and chloride ions. I don't know if barium, okay, so here's the barium and here's the chloride here. And if we go up to our rules, chlorides are soluble and barium is not among the exceptions. But most importantly, the fact it tells you it's a solution. If it's a solution, then what you're mixing together is dissolved in it. So these, when you do your ionic equation, these and these are both going to be written as ions. But you're making a precipitate. You see this? You, you're, you, you're mixing two liquids together and you get a white cloud form. That's barium sulfate. So that's going to be written with a solid of the barium and a sulfate, and then you're going to write sodium chloride on your molecular equation as your other product with aqueous. That's the pretty version. But ionic, you're going to keep it as ions. Net, you're only going to include what made your product of barium and sulfate, which of course would be the barium ions and the sulfate ions. So let's look at that. So If I go to the whiteboard, I, okay, I'm just gonna show you this, then I'll go back to the whiteboard. This is a picture of what's happening. See, here's your solution of barium chloride. It's actually barium ions and chloride ions in there. Here's your solution of sodium sulfate. It's actually sodium ions and sulfate ions in there. You mix them together in a beaker, you end up with a product. This white stuff is barium sulfate, solid and you still have the sodium ions and the chloride ions hanging around. So I'm going to go back to here just for a minute. I'm going to go to the whiteboard just to write the molecular equation, because that's not on that slide. So the word said that barium sulfate can be prepared. So we have a product of barium sulfate Okay, we put an S because it's a solid, it's a product. It tells us. Can be prepared by mixing solutions, so that tells us these are dissolved in water, of barium chloride, I write aqueous because it's a solution, and sodium sulfate. And I'm going to have to rewrite this, I apologize but you see the, the order I was doing. I was trying to write the product first. Make sure you write balanced equations. Okay, so that's my reactants. What's my product? Well, it tells us barium sulfate, solid. It's not aqueous, it fell out of, it fell out of solution. It's precipitate and sodium sulfate. No, that was. So the barium and the sulfate were used for this. And so what do we have left? We have sodium left and we have chloride. And I have to balance this. So I have to say two because I have two here and two here. Aqueous. So this is the molecular equation. This is the pretty one. We don't, we don't show ions in this one. Okay. So now let's look at, take this and go back and look at that slide of the ionic equation. So this is what was happening. So there's your ionic equation. Your solution items were, bro were broken out because I said you had a solution of barium chloride and notice you had to keep your stoichiometry. You had Cl sub two so it's going to be two chloride ions for every one barium ion. Sodium and the sulfate, because these are all ions. These are all dissolved solutions. You mix these together. You've got the barium sulfate solid. Your sodium is still in an ionic form and your chloride is still in an ionic form because these are soluble. Now you go back and you say, where are my spectator ions? What can I cancel out? Because it's identical left and right. Sodium is identical left and right. Chloride is identical left and right. So we get rid of those, they're spectator ions. What's left? The barium, 
aqueous, the sulfate aqueous, and that is an error. Fixed. Okay. And forms barium sulfate solid. See that? That is the net ionic equation. That's what's actively involved in the chemical reaction. So there's the three equations, and that's how we we write them. Okay, now what about this situation? So the net ionic equation, potassium chloride and sodium sulfate. Potassium is always soluble. Sodium is always soluble. So my ionic equation, and it's equation in quotation marks for a reason. On the left side, of course, let's break this up. You have potassium and chloride, right? Because that's what's actually in your beaker here. And that's what the ionic equation tells you. In your other beaker here, we have sodium nitrate solution, which means it's actually sodium ions and nitrate ions. We mix them together. What do we get? Do we get anything insoluble formed? No. Because if my potassium can combine with my nitrate, but anything with potassium is soluble. So potassium nitrate is, in, is soluble and therefore it's still ions on the right hand side. After I mix in this beaker, I still have potassium ions and nitrate ions. What about sodium chloride? The sodium can mix with the chloride, but anything with sodium is soluble. And so you still have free sodium ions and free chloride ions. You have nothing formed. You have no chemical reaction. You just have a bunch of ions floating around. You had a bunch of ions here, a bunch of ions here. They're all floating around in here, having an ion party. We say no reaction occurs. You cannot write a molecular equation for this. You would write no reaction. Okay, I'm going to go back to the board just to show you that because this is the kind of questions I like to ask on a test. So the question was, the net ionic equation for the reaction of KCl So if you're given this and you're told to write the molecular equation, your answer is NR, no reaction. There is no molecular equation for this because there is no chemical reaction that occurs. And if there's no chemical reaction that occurs, all you're doing is mixing a bunch of ions. That's not a chemical reaction. We're only interested in, in chemical reactions. So, the answer to this, if I ask you, is no reaction. NR, no reaction. Do not try to give me, you know, if you try to give me that's not correct because this is not, this is the same as this. There's no reaction. So we've got for a chemical reaction to occur, something on the right has to be different from the left. When we break things out into the ions, we discover that there's nothing different. There's no solid or gas form. So if you get this, the answer is no reaction. If you have no solid, no precipitate form, if nothing insoluble forms, then it is no reaction. And so that's why reaction is put in Quotation marks here because it's not actually an equation because there is no reaction. So make sure you understand that. This is the whole principle of aqueous chemistry and aqueous reactions. All right, touch on this. We're going to come back to this when we do the acid base. There's something called the inventory of a solution. What it means is what's actually there. So Basically, you're taking, you're giving, you're telling me this. What's actually in there? The principle is your product. So I'm, this is just a quick introduction that you're going to have something called an inventory. And 
it's going to come become more important when we talk about the acid base reaction. Okay, so I'm going to come back to that. Um, right. Let me look at the other slides. One moment. That's not what I want. Okay. All right. So I'm I'm actually just going to work out a few more. Um, examples so you have a chance to practice these so i'm going to give you the the verbal and then we'll go to the the whiteboard because i want you to look at it in the rules and that table So the first example, I'm going to make sodium hydroxide solution with magnesium chloride solution. Okay, sodium, anything with sodium is soluble. So you know immediately the sodium is going to be soluble whether I, it's with the hydroxide or the chloride. The magnesium, here's the chloride, so it's a solution, so you know it's soluble when you start with. And magnesium's not in an exception. Well, what about if I, I, when I rearrange them, I'll get sodium chloride and magnesium hydroxide. Well, here's hydroxides right here, insoluble. So that will give me a product. And let's look at the table. Sodium, anything with sodium is soluble. So no matter what it rearranges with, it's going to be soluble. It's going to be ions. Magnesium chloride, here's my magnesium. Chloride's here, soluble. But if I, if I, when it's mixed and it attracts to the hydroxide, by the way, you do need to know that that's hydroxide, it's very important, we, it's insoluble. So do you see where I'm going to get that? So let's go to the whiteboard. Okay, so we're mixing sodium hydroxide, magnesium chloride, both solutions, <laughs> excuse me. What's that going to give us? Now, the very first thing is the molecular equation. It's the pretty version. It's the big picture. You're saying, I took a sample of my sodium hydroxide solution. I mixed it with some of my magnesium chloride solution. What happened? You go back to the table. The sodium can mix with the chloride. Again, this is the big picture. So we're going to write it as if it's actually a compound. I have I'll balance it in a minute. When the magnesium mixes with the hydroxide, we looked that up and we found out that it in fact is insoluble. So that is a solid. So this, so let's balance it. I have two chlorines here, two here, two here. Okay, now I'm balanced. This is my molecular equation. Now, unfortunately, I don't have room, so I'll probably have to erase something after. All right. So the ionic equation is next. You write down what you actually have. Well, first of all, we said we had solutions of these two things, so we know that they are aqueous ions. Keep your coefficients, keep your numbers. So I have two sodium ions, aqueous, because this is what's actually in the beaker. And I have two hydroxide ions. I have a magnesium ion, or you can think of it as a mole of magnesium ions. I have two moles of chloride ions. 
Notice I put aqueous in each of these because they're all dissolved in water. So this is what I actually mix together. This is what, in reality, I joined together. And then what we found out is, well, my sodium is not going to solidify with anything because sodium is always soluble. But we found out that the magnesium, when it reacts with the hydroxide, will in fact give a solid, right? So here, that is my ionic equation. This is what's really in the beaker. Now let's do the net ionic equation. Net is what's actually involved in the reaction. Get rid of the spectator ions, the ones that are identical left and right. They're, they're hanging around taking cell phone pictures. So two sodium ions, two sodium ions, aqueous, identical. Get rid of them. Two chloride ions, two chloride ions, identical. Get rid of them. Hydroxide is in a reaction. Magnesium is in a reaction. Okay. So my net ionic reaction, I'll write it in green, is what's left. This and this and this. Do you see that? So you simply rewrite what's left. This is my net ionic reaction. And I don't know why I started this so far left. Right, I mean. Okay, that is my net ionic reaction. I only wrote what's actively involved in the chemical reaction. So molecular equation, the pretty one. Ionic equation, what's actually in the beaker, net ionic. Showing the ions involved that are making the solid. Okay, let's do another one. Again, I'm going to go back to the rules and the table. So we'll work through this first as a, as a verbal so you can see the process. So I took two solutions, a solution of potassium fluoride. All right, potassium is in my group one. All of my potassiums, there it is right there, are soluble. So, and of course, if I tell you I have a solution of something that's soluble but I want you to see this. So there's potassium, magnesium chloride. There's my chloride. Magnesium is not in the exception, so that is soluble. Potassium chloride is my right-hand product side. This is the molecular equation. That's one of the arrangements I can make. It is soluble. Magnesium fluoride, okay, it's not in here, but if you go down to this list, it's here. Fluoride are frequently insoluble, but this is an example that I would give you the table to use. This is a type of question, because magnesium fluoride, I don't expect you to know that off the top of your head, but I do expect you to be able to read a table. So if we go potassium, everything with potassium is soluble. Magnesium chloride, let's look at, there's the magnesium, there's the chloride, that's soluble. When they rearrange, you get potassium chloride, soluble. Magnesium fluoride. Here's a magnesium. Here's my fluoride. Insoluble. I have a reaction. Therefore, you know you have a chemical reaction. So now let's go write those different equations. Okay. So the first part was simply I mixed a solution of potassium fluoride, a sample of it, and a sample of my magnesium fluoride solution together. All right, I'm getting my parentheses confused. What happened? Okay, you just looked up in the table. First of all, we do the pretty version and we say, well, these are all actually ions and so the potassium can go over here and the magnesium can go with the fluoride. And we looked up in that table and we saw that this is in fact a solid. So that's, there is a chemical reaction. 
these twos are there because that's what balances it. Okay, so that's my molecular equation. That's a KCL aqueous. It doesn't look like it does it. Rewrite that. Okay. So let's do the, the ionic. The ionic is what's actually in there. So actually when I mix these solutions and keep your, your coefficients, I really mix two moles of potassium ions and two moles of fluoride ions with one mole of magnesium ion. Notice I'm putting aqueous in front of each of these and two moles of chloride ions. I mixed that all together because that's what's actually in each of these and I got more potassium ions because they are always aqueous in water. More chloride ions and I got a solid of magnesium fluoride. So that's my ionic equation. I mixed these ions together and I ended up with a solid and some more ions. So let's get rid of the excess ions that are not participating to come up with the net ionic. So my potassium ions are identical left and right. So they're extraneous, they're spectators. My fluoride ion is actually involved in a chemical reaction. The same with magnesium. So we leave them. But my chloride ions are spectator ions. They're not participating. So now I take what I have left and I write my net ionic equation. Which is, you just bring these back down. Two fluoride ions, or two moles, plus a mole of magnesium ion yields a mole of magnesium fluoride solid. Okay, that is your net ionic equation. The ions that got together to actually form the chemical reaction. So that is the three types of aqueous chemistry. When we are mixing solutions, you have two solutions two batches of ions mixing together and you form a precipitate. And remember, if you do not form an insoluble compound, you do not have a reaction. You have a no reaction. So make sure you understand the concept of what's going on here so you can work the problems. But then if you understand the concept, you'll be able to work every problem that you come across. Okay, so that is the end of uh, lecture 13 part two. And part three is going to be electrolytes, which has to do with solubility and probably introduction to acid base.